Hello and welcome to Spokane County Spotlight. I'm Commissioner Al French, and my guest today is Dr. Sherry McMahon, President of Eastern Washington University. Sherry, welcome to today's program. Thank you, Commissioner French. I'm so glad to be here. So, Sherry, would you mind giving our audience a little introduction of yourself and tell us about the path that you led you uh, and the role to be president of Eastern Washington University? Uh, of course. Um, you know, I started in the California State University system, and I spent over 20 years at two of the CSU campuses. And the CSU campus looks very much like Eastern Washington University. And I had the pleasure of starting out as a faculty member, mm -hmm. and then I moved on to be a chair and a dean and progressively uh, became the vice president and chief academic officer, also known as a provost, mm -hmm. at Cal State San Bernardino. And then when I saw the, um, the offer open at Eastern for looking for a new president and looking at Eastern and what they were hoping to achieve, I thought, I think I'm a really good fit mm -hmm. for this institution and wanted to put my name name in the hat. Oh, good. And we're very glad that you're here and stuff. So uh, most of our viewers are undoubtedly familiar with Eastern Washington University. But for those watching who may be new to the community, could you give us a little high-level overview of EWU? Sure. Eastern Washington has been around for 140 years, so it has quite a bit of history in the region. We have about 10,000 students uh, at any one time on our campus, and we're so excited, not only first-time freshmen, but community college transfers, older adults, uh, people with some uh, education but not a degree coming back to finish their degree. So we really engage and want to serve as many individuals as we can for the region. We started off as uh, a teaching institution mm -hmm. called the Normal School yeah. and have advanced uh, most recently very significantly in the STEM fields. And so we've really built programs like computer science, cybersecurity, and most recently, nursing. So I know that uh, you and I have run into each other at a couple other community events. So you are uh, at getting out there and getting to know Spokane. And so uh, uh, just say welcome and uh, look forward to uh, a long uh, uh, time together uh, as you uh, spend uh, uh, leading the university. So with a couple months under your belt now in this new position, can you tell us some of the first impressions you have of EWU? The EWU community and greater Spokane community has been wonderful. You know, um, over four in 10 uh, baccalaureate degree recipients in the region come from Eastern mm -hmm. Washington. So we have a long legacy of alumni out in the community and everywhere I go, as long as I'm wearing an Eastern Washington or Eagle shirt, People will stop me and they'll say, go Eags. And of course, my response is, go mm -hmm. Eags. So it's been quite a, a welcome environment for me and I've really enjoyed getting to know everyone. It's uh, with uh, Eastern and Gonzaga and Wazoo and the University of Idaho where I went to, uh, there is a lot of alumni loyalty to the universities and, and uh, we carry that through for a lifetime. So it's... Uh, uh, it's one of the, the very uh, nice things about Spokane. So, yes. uh, so Eastern uh, EWU has all sorts of benefits for the students who attend this four-year university. But could you also share with us some of the other benefits that EWU provides for residents throughout Spokane County? Sure. You know, Eastern is the most affordable four-year baccalaureate granting institution um, in the state of Washington, and we're very proud of that. Uh, it's because we are open to all. As I mentioned, it's not just for high schoolers going to college, but somebody who may have not completed their degree yet that thinks, well, maybe I should just get it. Mm -hmm. We have several master's online programs. so. Anybody really mm -hmm. could come to Eastern and they will feel, feel welcome. So we're very proud of that. I know one of the uh, professors, well, I don't know that he's a professor, but he's associated with the university, uh, Dr. Patrick Jones, yes. uh, is, a, is always a wealth of information and, and benchmarking where we are as a community and, and uh, very informative. And I know that the county has used him a number of times. So uh, 
So are, are there any new and exciting programs at EW that you would like to uh, highlight for our audience today? Yes, well, we've recently taken our nursing two-year degree program and have expanded that to mm -hmm. a bachelor's degree, a baccalaureate. So we uh, just received uh, permission from the nursing commission, our accrediting body, that we can accept our first cohort. So we will be accepting 40 new students coming fall, uh, 23 and 40 in spring 24. So we're very excited about um, venturing off. And, and we know nursing is so needed in our community. And with the amount of distress on our health care providers uh, leaving and just had enough with COVID, we need to be able to help yeah. our community out. Boy, nothing has a, uh, demonstrated that need for uh, quality nursing uh, like this pandemic that we've just spent the last two and a half years getting through. And, and uh, while a lot of us would like to think that we're through it, we're not, we're still experiencing um, uh, cases and stuff. So, and, and for rural communities, the, having access to that nursing care is critical because it's hard finding nurses, it's hard finding doctors and stuff. So thank you for, uh, for being able to provide that offering and stuff to our community. From your perspective, what is the environment like now for high school students considering uh, attending a university like the EWU? Sure. Well, our high school students have gone through a lot, just like all of our families yeah. and our community in the Spokane region regarding COVID. They've had to learn online, mm -hmm. and it's just been so disruptive. Um, so we, we know that, and I think that with our incoming freshman class, our arms are wide open. It's all mm -hmm. about providing a caring environment for our students and showing them the path because we really believe in the transformational nature of our degree, and we are here to support our students. That's terrific. So if you had a prospective student considering attending EWU, what would your pitch be to them? Sure, I, our pitch for any student out there or prospective student out there is that we are the most affordable degree with the highest quality that they'll mm -hmm. receive. Our faculty, you just mentioned Patrick Jones a yeah. moment ago, are so well respected in their field. Our students, when we do surveys, love the faculty relationship that they have, not only what they learn, but the experiences that they get in and out of the classroom. And so I think if they're looking for a place, especially in the Spokane region, where they want to stay close to home, but maybe not at home, mm -hmm. uh, Eastern is a great place to be. Well, and, and Cheney is such a, a, a warm, friendly, uh, university town. I, I, I look at Cheney much like I look at Moscow, Idaho when I was attending the University of Idaho and mm -hmm. there's just a wholesomeness about that, that environment that uh, is, uh, uh, sometimes I, I miss that small town flavor and stuff, but Cheney is a, uh, is a real jewel. So what are, what are you hearing from your staff about the biggest issues facing the university? Sure. And, you know, our staff have also, also suffered from COVID and yeah. working online. And, you know, they haven't had the opportunity to really do what they love, which is helping our students out one-on-one. Um, -on -one. And so I think that uh, they're excited to come back. They're excited to build a united vision together. Um, we will be starting a new strategic plan. Uh, our street strategic plan is just ending mm -hmm. this year. And so it's a great time to work with our staff and help build a united vision together, both for our faculty, staff, and students. So what do you see as some of the broader challenges uh, our community faces and how do, you, how do they relate to EWU? Like any large community, the Spokane region suffers from, you know, uh, as we suffer from growth and, and the economic uncertainties, homelessness is certainly an issue. I know uh, our colleagues at Eastern have been very supportive in our urban and regional planning departments, uh, doing census data, trying to understand the root causes of homelessness that will help provide solutions for the problem. Our social work department is now working with this Spokane library and providing an avenue of support 
for people that will come in and out of the library that may be homeless. So I think there's many avenues where the community and the university can partner together. Well, one of the programs that you offer at EWU, I believe, is urban planning. And um, uh, a lot of those graduates end up uh, in an uh, urban planning environment here in Spokane County, and we're grateful for that, the, the education and the wisdom that they, uh, they gather at the university. But as we, you know, Spokane in the last four to five years, it's like we've been discovered by the rest of the world, and uh, now they all want to come here. And, and so that creates some stresses and some pressures that... Uh, uh, on the infrastructure that we have here and, and also some of the other social programs and things like that. So having students that uh, uh, are trained and educated in this environment uh, also enables them to be uh, very um, uh, uh, able to transition into the metric that helps us address these growth stress, uh, uh, growth challenges and stuff. So. Uh, appreciate the work that you're doing in that area. We could uh, uh, definitely use some help there. So is there any one thing that surprised you about this region when you moved here uh, to accept this position? Oh, goodness. Well, I think the most surprising area for me has been in the recreation. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm a native Californian. I come from California. I can drive to a, a recreational park uh, it may take me a half hour, even though it's a few miles away because mm -hmm. we have traffic in California. And then I go there and I can't find a parking spot because there's a right. thousand other people wanting to go to the parks. And I am just simply amazed at the beauty of the region. I am able to go out. I go to Turnbull, Fish Lake, Bowl and Pitcher. I've been to so many different areas. I love hiking, mm -hmm. and there's hardly anybody out there, and yeah. I feel like I'm really one with nature. So I think it's so surprising for me, coming from a really just vast populated area to really getting to see what nature is all about. So you mentioned that you enjoy hiking. What other kind of activities do you enjoy? Oh, goodness. Um, Pre-COVID, I was a fitness instructor for at least 25 years, wow. and I taught Zumba classes and step classes, and that was sort of just my outlet, and I love doing it, and I'm going to do a few on the campus, and Commissioner French, you are welcome to join me <laughs> if you like. <laughs> well, I... Uh, I, I guess that's one of the reasons why they say you're a mover and a shaker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're very athletic and stuff. So that's that's great to know. The um, uh, so in, in addition to that and hiking, are there any other kind of recreational activities that have an appeal to you that uh, Spokane offers for you? I look forward to going to some of the musicals and the, yeah. the performances. Um, yeah. Again, I haven't tapped into those, but yeah. I'm, I, I am looking forward to the season coming up, uh, yeah. hearing the symphony, which I was able to do, but also more of the plays and participating in those events as well. The symphony is absolutely excellent here in the, in the community, as well as the Broadway series. I mean, yes. you can now see you know, uh, off-Broadway shows out of New York and uh, right here in town. And it is uh, uh, a pastime that uh, my wife and I enjoy a lot. So the um, so what is your long-term vision beyond 2022 for uh, EWU? So my vision for EWU is really to partner with the campus. Um, they had expressed concerns about having a vision and making sure that we were working together uh, not only being transparent, but making it a shared vision. And that's what I'm embarking on. So I'm spending these first 100 days on what we call a listening tour to hear from different faculty, staff, student groups about the concerns they have and about the direction that they want to head uh, as a university. So I'm very excited that I'll tie into my plans for developing our new strategic plan come 2023. Um, I do know a few priority areas, such as community engagement and workforce development, and areas that I know will surface, as well as issues like sustainability for the campus that will have long-term effects. Well, that, that's one of the things that I've learned about Spokane is that uh, uh, it, it's a community that wants to be very engaged in the things that are going on. 
So I don't think you're going to lack for either one, volunteers, or two, opinions. Uh, so um, uh, uh, good luck in that journey. The, uh, there's been an awful lot of economic growth in our region. Uh, what are your thoughts on how to maintain our quality of life in the region, uh, and how does EW play into that? I mentioned one of my interest areas is the issue of environmental sustainability. Mm -hmm. And I think EWU, looking at how we do our landscaping, how we partner with the Spokane Transit Authority, for right. instance, uh, all our faculty, staff, and students can take the bus for free and go just about anywhere in the community. And it's just really exciting to see progressiveness in this area, a progressive mm -hmm. campus. So I think we can be a leader, a role model, and a partner for the county in issues of sustainability. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the things that uh, uh, recently opened up is the Catalyst Building. Yes. Uh, your thoughts about that? Yes. Well, that was... The Catalyst Building is one of those uh, areas that attracted me to Eastern because it is a zero energy building right. and so excited about the programs that we have to offer and the true partnership with the Spokane community and with Spokane businesses in the area. So we're really delighted to be able to develop that out and uh, work with the community on partnering in different programs. Well, and it, it, that the building is located in a very exciting part of Spokane and, and uh, one of those areas in Spokane that is changing pretty dramatically with the right. University District and you know now with the new pedestrian bridge going across the railroad tracks and connectivity and a lot of, lot of good stuff going on right now in this community and stuff. So it's, uh, uh, hopefully that building will uh, 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 do all that you want it to do for the university. So reflecting on your short time as president of EW, uh, what have been some of the most rewarding parts of your job? I would say the most rewarding part is the people that you meet yeah. uh, because they're so excited about Eastern and Eastern's future. And that's what gets me excited because I know, you know, after 140 years, we have a, a new chapter, a new book chapter to start. And um, I know that I have the support that I need to be successful. And I'm most excited about that. As I've mentioned, I've met alumni all over. We have 41,000 uh, graduates living in Spokane mm -hmm. County. So that's just very exciting to know just about everywhere I go, we can get the support. And likewise, I want and we want EWU to be a partner with our community and to really develop uh, Sp the Spokane region. So I believe Welcoming Week is next week? Yes. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. Well, we, we are so excited that our students are, are coming back. I, I must say we, we operate on two systems, both the semester and the quarter system, which has been a little bit of a challenge. Mm -hmm. So our semester system students have already kicked off, and those are our students at our um, university district area, right, in our Health Peninsula area, mm -hmm. our dental hygiene students, our uh, physical therapy students, and really all of the health disciplines. So they've already started their journey and they're a very important part of Eastern Washington University. Um, but welcome week for our quarter campus students, where most of our students are first time incoming students, will live in the residence halls. It's just an exciting time. They learn all about our amazing recreation facilities, uh, the centers that we have on campus. All of our athletic events are going on right now. We have you know, football, an active season that just started last week. Our soccer, women's soccer team is just doing an exceptional job. Our women's volleyball team is out playing. So it's really a thriving campus to be on. Uh, and so I'm most excited about our Welcome Week activities. So one of the things that uh, I think the universities here in this region uh, took advantage of is creating partnerships between the different universities to where either they can share curricula or they can share staff and things like that, I believe, is unique to Spokane. Is, is, is that kind of relationship something you experience in Southern California? And what kind of interesting challenges or opportunities does that, that present to you uh, being here at Eastern? Yes, so uh, we did have some activities across universities in California. Mm -hmm. 
but primarily driven around research. Okay. So, um, for instance, the California State would partner up with the University of California, which was more of the research generated, and we would have opportunities. Our, their graduate students would learn to teach at the California State University, mm -hmm. so if they wanted to go mm -hmm. on to be a professor, they would learn from us, and then we can further develop the research areas of our faculty and our students. Um, here it's set up a little bit differently where the universities truly partner together mm -hmm. in an academic program or an academic mission. And I, I'm really enjoying that. I know with the University of Washington, we have our rural, dent rural dentistry program, mm -hmm. our dental hygiene program, and we see just so many wonderful um, wonderful benefits of those relationships of working. Mm -hmm. And so it's not a threat to be another university yeah. because we find ways to partner together. So do you see opportunities for expanding the amount of research that we can do here locally? Is that um, an opportunity for us that we ought to be working toward? Yes, most definitely. I okay. think research has an enormous opportunity. In fact, uh, in a meeting earlier today with my provost, we were talking about community-based research and how important it is to make sure we do it right and to partner with those organizations that will allow us to. One thing, I'm, I'm a community-based researcher by mm -hmm. heart, and one thing I learned early on is that you never want to go into a community and do a program, whether it's an activity program or a nutrition program, and then just leave the community. So you have to be able to make sure, because they're investing in you, you're investing in them, that the solutions that you're able to provide are long-term for the community. So as you look at the university and um, uh, the, the community at large, are there other opportunities that you see that you think, you know, we should be looking at maybe doing that? Or uh, are, are th have those things started to materialize for you? I would say yes. I believe they are materializing. Okay. Part of it is we want our students to have a workforce development uh, opportunity. Right. And I think it could be a marker for Eastern Washington University. So. I would love to be able to partner with industry to get our students to intern or to job shadow or however you want to look at it, provide right. more of those experiential learning, which is so important for our students because it's not just the academic skills, it's those soft skills right. that we want to be able to expose our students to. So I think that this will be in the future of Eastern Washington. So I, I know a good part of the student body uh, commutes to Eastern. Uh, you've got, a, a, I think, freshmen and sophomore live on campus. Oh, or freshmen do. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, freshmen do, and then everybody else commutes and stuff. So one of those regional partnerships that, uh, you know, I was um, uh, party to was the STA Eagle Pass program. And that has uh, not only expanded the... Uh, uh, the opportunity for people in the community to uh, go to Eastern, but it's also helped relieve some of the stress on the campus with regard to parking yeah. and transportation and all of those. Uh, is that something unique to Eastern, or did you experience that in some of your other universities as well? You know, um, unfortunately, not. Well, we we were excuse me. We were developing some of the bus par transit partnership programs for satellite campuses but it was relatively new. Right. I love this approach. I think it's so convenient for a student to say, oh, I wanna be able to go downtown, hop on the bus free of charge, and, and to get to where they need to be. It you know, eliminates pollution, eliminates the stress, the cost of cars and gas and everything. So it's a wonderful opportunity that we have. Well, and one of the other things that STA did is that I believe they provide Wi-Fi access on the bus, so yeah. a lot of the a lot of the, the students are uh, doing homework and being able to do research while they're in transit to the university and stuff. So that's, uh, that's one of those added benefits and stuff. So is there uh, anything else about the community that you would like to share with us or about the university that you think, you know what, this is something that I really value or this is something that I think is a real opportunity for us? Sure. 
You know, I am in love with the Cheney and the greater Spokane community. Yeah. I try to I live right on campus, mm -hmm. so I try to walk the campus daily. And I've just met so many beautiful people in the neighborhood that really want the best for, for everyone. So I'll be walking around campus and I'll see one of the sports teams practice or, or you know, just kids in the neighborhood at a neighborhood park. And it's just such a wonderful feeling. And I hope that that you know, all students, uh, first of all, go to college. That's all yeah. I can ask for. I think yeah. that's really the best thing that you can do. We know that going to college increases every, you know, civic engagement, voter right. registration, all of these wonderful things. But I think they truly find Eastern would be, is a great home for so many of our students. Well, and I understand that Eastern actually has an athletic program. No, I'm being facetious. You've got some great sports activities between uh, you know, basketball, women's soccer, as you indicated, uh, football, and uh, we're we're now at the beginning of a lot of uh, exciting seasons and and uh, great hope and promise for uh, for EWU. Um, any any initial observations about that? What I have found since I started at EWU is I can't believe the amount of our, our student athletes uh, getting such high GPAs. They seem to make every mm -hmm. roster, every list. So our student athletes are just wonderful role models. And I really want to attribute part of that to our coaching staff, which is just amazing. They put academics first. They know the mission of the university. Everything else is icing on the cake. And it's a wonderful experience for our students to go through. Well, Eastern is not just the University for Cheney, it's the University for Spokane County, um, much like Wazoo and Gonzaga is and stuff. So the, um, the graduates for Eastern uh, are the workforce for tomorrow, and, uh, and we were blessed uh, to have them here. So uh, thank you for all that you're doing for the university. We uh, are delighted that you're here we're excited to be able to partner with you. Uh, we're a resource uh, to uh, uh, help you be successful and to uh, help our students there at Eastern be successful too because, uh, you know, quite frankly, they're what's going to make sure that my Social Security check gets uh, covered. So, uh, so, Sherry, I've enjoyed our co uh, discussion, and I think uh, our viewers have too, uh, but I'm afraid we've run out of time. So... I'd like to thank my guest, Sherry McBan, as president of Eastern Washington University for joining me today. And as a reminder, a video of today's spotlight can be accessed on our Spokane County homepage and our Spokane County YouTube channel. I'm County Commissioner Al French. Thank you for joining us today on Spokane County Spotlight.